Hi, I'm Dr Pam Blundell from the Institute of Psychological Sciences at the University of Leeds and I'm going to be telling you today about Pavlovian conditioning. I'm going to outline for you some of the principles of Pavlovian conditioning and then I'm going to tell you about a particular example of how Pavlovian conditioning has been applied to solving a problem in humans. I'm going to start by telling you about Pavlovian conditioning and then I'm going to give you an example of how it's been really useful to help us understand a human problem of anticipatory nausea and vomiting. So everybody knows about Pavlov and Pavlov's dogs. The basic principle is that if you take a neutral stimulus, such as a tone or a bell, and pair it with a biologically significant stimulus, such as food or an electric shock, then you get a change in the behaviour to that previously neutral stimulus, which is appropriate to that biologically relevant stimulus. So in Pavlov's case, he had metronomes and lights, it wasn't all just bells, and he paired those with food. And he looked at how much dogs salivated. He literally counted the drops of salivation that they made. And if you go and get his book, available from all good bookshops, you can see his tabulated tables of how many drops of saliva they gave in each of the different conditions of the sorts of experiments that he ran. Everything that I'm going to tell you about today comes from Pavlov's work. Initially, there's no response to the neutral stimulus. Why would there be? It's neutral. There may perhaps be an unconditioned response, a slight flinching if there's a tone, or rearing if there's a light, but that very quickly habituates. As trials proceed between the CS, the neutral stimulus, and the US, the biologically relevant stimulus, the behaviour of the animal changes. The animal begins to change its behaviour during that CS, that previously neutral stimulus, takes on some new meaning. The greatest learning occurs during the first few trials and here you can see a typical learning curve. So initially animals show no conditioned response and then over time the conditioned response increases with the greatest learning during the first few trials. Then learning reaches an asymptote. This is where the curve flattens off and no more learning is possible.